Jesus says you are the salt of the world. But what does that even mean? Hello world, I'm David Dorn and this is Preposterous. And this week we are in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. And if you watched last week's episode, you know that we are in the middle of the most awesome and most quoted sermon of all time. And it's one where Jesus is rocking our world. But here in this verse, Jesus says something rather strange, something rather preposterous. Look with me in uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the, of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. This doesn't make an awful lot of sense until you realize that salt has a variety of different uses. What do we use salt today for? Seasoning, right? We put it in our food to make stuff taste better and when it's not there, it is very apparent that it needs to be there. Salt seasons things. Salt is necessary uh, for our diet as well, but it's useful. Now, Jesus lived in the PR history of time. That, that's pre-refrigerator. And Israel was not known for its nice, cool climate. So how do you keep food from going bad? You put salt in it. Salt is a preservative. Uh, it keeps things from going bad. You would put salt in your meat and it would help preserve your meat over a long period of time before refrigerators. So when Jesus says you are the salt of the earth, he's making a statement. Uh, not saying that you spice up life, but that you preserve life. You preserve the people that you are around. Jesus is preaching that this is one of the defining marks of being one of his followers, that we preserve people. This also gives you some insight into the compassion of Jesus, that he gives us the ability to affect real change in people's lives around us. And it's also a huge responsibility for us. So what if we love and treat other people with respect the way Jesus did? That, that we stop our friends from abusing themselves, because they think that they are somehow uh, worthless. What if we go out of our way to make friends with people who are lonely? What if we step up when we see people being bullied around us? Isn't this how we preserve people? In the Old Testament, there is a man named Abraham, and God chose Abraham special to be uh, the father of the people of Israel. And there's a story about Abraham where God just comes and visits him. I don't know about you, but I think it would be awesome if God came and visited me and we were sitting out underneath a tree in the heat of the day, sipping some iced tea and just talking. And that's what's happening here with Abraham. But as Abraham and God are sitting underneath this tree, they're talking, God tells Abraham that the cities, these two very wicked cities that are surrounding uh, Abraham's land are going to be destroyed. These are absolutely wicked towns. You know you've crossed a moral boundary when two angels walk into your town and the entire population of the town tries to gang rape them. Humanity can be pretty jacked up, but Abraham pleads with God for these cities. He asks God that if you find 50 righteous people in the cities, will you please not destroy them? And God says, okay. If I find 50 righteous people in the city, I won't destroy it. But then Abraham says, well, what if you only find 45? If you find only 45 righteous people in the city, will you not destroy it? And God says, okay, if I, if I only find 45, I won't destroy it. Abraham works God down to 10. If God finds just 10 righteous people in the city, he won't destroy the cities. But God didn't find 10 righteous people. He only found one, and it was Abraham's nephew who God escorted out of the city. But this shows the example of what Jesus is saying here. His followers preserved the world around them. If there were righteous people found in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, God would have never destroyed them. You make a difference in the lives of your friends and your family, whether you realize it or not. Now, salt was also used for something else entirely, money. The salt was really expensive, and in the Roman Empire, uh, the Romans often paid their soldiers with salt. Here you go. Don't spend it all in one place. 
Boy, that'll make you think twice before you throw out those little salt packets packaged in the plastic forks and knives set. So could it be that Jesus is not only saying that his followers preserve the world around them, but that his followers are also valuable? I don't know about you, but I like the idea of being valuable. Now, what about when salt loses its flavor? This verse talks about that. And yes, salt does lose its flavor. You know, we all screw up. We all have the potential of walking away from God. Yet even then, God still uses us. During the winter, salt is used underfoot. It's not a glorious job, but it helps other people from slipping. You know, God will always use you as an example, but you get to determine whether or not it's a good example or a not so good example. Now, if you walk away from God, that doesn't mean your value changes, but your relationship with God and your role with God changes. Fortunately for us, God will always take us back when we walk away. So this week, your challenge is to go out and try preserving the people around you, your friends, or your family, or the, just the people in close proximity to you. Find somebody who's having a bad day and cheer them up. Find somebody who is lonely or depressed and just spend some time with them. Step into their lives, step into their world, and just kind of help them out. Go out and try being the salt of the world and, and then come back and leave me a video response. Tell me how that was for you. Tell me a story about you stepping into somebody's life and just being with them and, and helping preserve them. And make sure you share this video on your Facebook and your Twitter so your friends can see what you're interacting with and see how you're growing with Jesus. And maybe they can develop a relationship with him the way you are. Leave me your questions as a comment on YouTube or, or ask your youth pastor. Or you can tweet me at I am preposterous if this video has changed the way you think about yourself or Jesus. But I hope you have a great day. God bless. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed Preposterous, make sure you like this video and share it on Facebook with your friends. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. As always, if you have any questions for me, you can tweet me at I am Preposterous. And if you're a small group leader and would like to use Preposterous for your small group, you can sign up on our website at preposterousproject.com. God bless.